Welcome to the podcast. My name is Hannah, and with me today, I have Tim Phillips, who I have the pleasure of speaking with today about goal setting. Tim is an author of the book Goal Getter, and I would love for him to share a little bit about himself. Certainly. Uh, how far back do you want me to go? <laughs> <laughs> as much as you're comfortable with. We'll start. We'll start at this. And forgive some of my, my language uh, I used is when I talk from stage and I have, I have my audience. So I, I use rougher words sometimes. Uh, but when I was 25, I, I, I just say I was just a loser. I was a mess. Uh, and, and what really, really was a bum about all that is I didn't know it. I mean, people, you know, because I gathered friends around me who says, hey, you're just like us. And mm -hmm. it wasn't until I got some mentorship in my life around 25, 26, that that contrast came in. And within a couple of years of this, of, of, of understanding, understanding my association and getting more knowledge, I went from, you know, just a regular, you know, punch in employee to running companies and later working with the fortune 500s. And now I'm in a position to uh, take that information. And I don't, I don't want to say I'm looking for losers, but people who are looking for mentorship, looking to be inspired, you know, the motivations inside all of us. And, you know, if you stay in that same fishbowl all your life, you won't realize, you know what, maybe I'm not that victim. Maybe, maybe I, all I need is, a, you know, wow, if he can, if I can do it, there's a lot of hope for a lot of people out there. Thank you so much, Tim. Once again, I'm so grateful that you're here. And guys, when I reached out to Tim, he was so happy and excited to do this with me. And he's such a pleasure to talk to. And I really hope you see this as we continue conversating. So as I mentioned today, Tim and I are going to be talking about goal setting. And I'm sure everyone has a very basic idea and generalization of what goal setting is. Like you write down what you want, you have a plan, and then do you cross your fingers and hope that it happens? Like, so today, Tim is going to talk about more about the process. And Tim, the first question that I have is what purpose does goal setting serve? And is it really the first step to achieving what you want? Well, wow. the first step, I'll, I'll start with the first question first. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> uh, goal setting, the, 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 what really makes us really uh, different from the animal kingdom is the ability to actually set a goal. And the purpose of goal setting is to actually find out what is important to us. I, I, I you know, so it might give me a goal, like say a job or a, a family member and so forth, but that's not my goal. So, the, so now to get the answer to the second question is it, it gives you that fuel to life. Okay, I will work for my employer because that's my responsibility. But deep in my mind, I want to be an author or I want to finish my degree or I want to be a great parent or what, whatever that, that the bigger mission in life is. And that's what I address in my books and my talks. And the bigger mission in life might just be getting to work 15 minutes early. How do you do that, you know, with, with my schedule or what's finding out what is important because if you have a lifetime of people giving you your responsibilities you do quickly start forgetting what what do i find important and that might just be the goal i love how you said that goal setting and creating goals it's about what you find important and i think in society today a lot of the time when people think about goals they think of okay i want a mansion i want a ferrari i want a million dollars in the bank account and we become so like trapped into this idea and this mentality that goals have to be this big like in a sense unattainable idea of living like like a luxurious lifestyle. And I love how you said that goals are individualized and it's about really defining what it is that you want. So yeah, how yeah. can someone ask themselves and how can somebody really identify, okay, what is my goal? What do I want for myself? See, I only known you for a short period of time, but your ability to ask questions <laughs> is so <laughs> gifted. Uh, let's, see if I, let's see if I heard you right though. I, I want to address what, uh, a, a little bit um you mentioned you know the mansions and the cars and so forth and there's where the confusion kind of lies we go from the american dream to the american fantasy what goals they should be setting that is the question of all time and i'll tell you exactly what i understand i don't know <laughs> that's, that's a generic point uh when i when i do and by the way that's that is it's so hard uh 
the way our minds work, I'll get to some psychology here, is the center of our, it's actually the center of our brain, a little north of our uh, medulla oblongata, is actually the, the dream, the thought process. And in Christian circles, they would consider this where the Holy Spirit communicates to us. And that part of our brain does not have a language. It just has pictures. It has feelings. You know, sometimes I'm like, you know, Lord, what do you want me to do? And it's like, mm, in that direction is what I hear. It's like, mm -hmm. okay, what mm -hmm. just happened? So the first thing I would always uh, say to someone, do something. The first thing might be the best thing to do is start reading. Read something that just is a track. If it's a comic book, read a comic book. The whole purpose of that reading exercise is to get the imagination going. Once this starts going, it'll gravitate to what I just told you, that, that center, that, you know, that where our dreams comes from, our goal setting, our, our life purpose part of our brains. I'm, I'm getting a little weird on you, and that's not my intention, but that it's there. It, but it just doesn't speak English or Tagalog or whatever language you speak. Mm -hmm. It speaks in pictures and, and in feelings. And when we first start working to our goal, let's say a person, his whole goal in his life, he doesn't even know it, is to be one of the greatest architects to design things. But at at 18 months old, two years old, all he knows is he's going to build a sandcastle. Right. Mom, look what I did. And, and later on, maybe, maybe now he's going to build a, a fort and it's all stickly. He's not even using mathematics. He's using, you know, the, you know, the pair that the nail is better, is stronger than 9.8 meters per second squared or gravity, if you will. Mm -hmm. later, later on, maybe his mom shows him how to put a garage door together. Okay, or dad, or however it goes. And that, and that would be the progressive realization of that dream of, you know what, I really have a knack for this. Maybe I should, oh, math is hard, but I'll figure it out. Because the dream, the goal, the purpose is to be that architecture, right. not the mathematician. And this is what you got to go to, to get that to get that goal. That's a, that's a bit of a picture. But in the beginning, he's building sandcastles. What do you want to do it to? Like, eh, fireman. <laughs> mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Dad's a fireman. I'm a fireman, you know. Exactly. So goals, they're like an evolution in a sense. You don't automatically know what you want in the very beginning. It's through trial and error. It's through, you know, going through life and figuring out what your passions are, figuring out what you gravitate towards. And that's kind of how you figure out what, what goal you want in your life, right? Many times uh, goals are a dissatisfaction. Mm. I, I can't get through the day, but I don't like the way I'm living. Mm -hmm. Wow. That is very, <laughs> that is very powerful. It's also yes, in realizing, it yeah, what you don't like and how you don't want to live where you're like, okay, this is what I want for myself. Wow. Thank you, Tim. Can you explain more about the process of goal setting? So once someone identifies, this is what I want to achieve, like what does the process entail? How do they start and what process do they go to achieving that? Once the imagination sparked, uh, we are uh, wired to reverse engineering any thought that comes into our head. Uh, sometimes I use the example, something a little, a little benign would be, okay, guys, you are all in charge of a used car lot, and we got to move 100 cars before September, go. And then imagination starts reverse engineering that for 30 days. Well, we can have a car, we can have a car sale. We can, mm -hmm. you know, buy one, get one free. Or what they used to do in the 50s, they went door to door to sell cars. You know, <laughs> mm -hmm. but, but your, your reverse engineering, will we succeed? Um, probably not if, if with, a few, with a room full of amateurs, but you can see the process already reverse engineering. I have a dissatisfaction. How can I approach that? But the, me the mechanism in a nutshell is uh, uh, what I show in my seminars would be we have a thought, our imagination, we have a thought. And if, mm -hmm. we, if we meditate in something long enough, we will do actions whether we want to or not. I mean, uh, just watching a, a, a TV show on nutrition, all of a sudden you, 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 you avoid every Snickers bar in the 25 mile radius mm -hmm. because those thoughts make an action and it's not offensive to you. I, oh, I, that's, that's not important anymore. Okay. And, and, and if that action lasts long enough, you will now have a habit. What is a sicker bar? I'm going, I'm going for a carrot. Now you mm -hmm. are predictable. That predictability mm -hmm. now becomes your character. Okay. And from, and from that, oh, here comes uh, Ms. Hannah. And, you know, we, we don't, don't even bother with the Snickers bars, get her some carrots and, you know, and some celery. That's what she prefers. We already know that before she gets here. 
And now as your life progresses, we understand you to be a nutritionist and you know, how's that for a little walkthrough? <laughs> so, yeah, no, I love that. But it all starts not with action, not with habit, definitely not with character or, or getting to the end picture. It all starts with that magical thing called thoughts, that priceless asset that every politician, every school teacher, every friend, every advertisement wants to grab. Oh my gosh, we say this. And every social media application wants to grab is that imagination and those thoughts. Because they know if they can steer your thoughts, you will act on what they're steering you to. How do you feel about SMART goals? Like when someone says, when you have a goal, it has to be specific, measurable, attainable, realistic, and timely. Like what's your take on that? I have never studied the, that system. So it's, it's hard for me to speak upon that. Mm -hmm. um, what I can only say is once you have, once your imagination gets on it, what I teach is not so much attainable and so forth. I mean, you'll find out if I could be the president of Norway very quickly, it does have to be realistic, but it also has to be out of your reach. Anything that you and I, no, I'm sorry, this is in terms of my, my book series. My book series is called The Goal Getter. That's its own, it is its own defined term. A goal, as we're kind of generically talking about, is, well, I don't have that yet, but I can achieve it. But you're achieving it in your own power. A goal getter is having the habit of accomplishing things that grows you as a person. The magic behind that is once you're actions and your habits now your character is a goal getter people expect you to be that leader once again we're not saving the world or whales or anything else it could be i, I know how to clean my junk tour i got my my family organized the kids are ready for school and that is the habit your character people that will distract you from that won't even approach you they won't know you exist and that level of peace you have in your life is powerful any goal system um, that someone approaches or learns is, is just as good or is, is very workable because you're doing something. You'll realize quickly if it will work for your personality. Uh, mm -hmm. I studied under uh, Stephen Covey, Seven uh, Habits of Highly Successful People, and I struggled. You know, you got to list one, two, three, four, five. What's priority for that day? But smart, is, it sounds like those elements are all present for someone to learn if the if it works for them, that is a great place to, to start. Thanks, Tim. How do you feel about short-term, mid-term, and long-term goals? Like when someone is having or creating a goal plan, do you think it's important to categorize these goals and work with them from short-term to long-term? What do you uh, think about that? I kind of addressed it just a little bit earlier uh, with, the, with the, you know, the architect in the sandbox, mm -hmm. you know, his short term goal was to build a, to build a, a sandcastle. And uh, maybe in high school, he can, he can see bigger pictures. Gosh, I want to be an architect, but I'm mowing lawns. And so that, that's your short, mid and, and large. For someone who's coming to me, what's your five year plan? Uh, in, in many HR uh, departments, the five-year plan is really a test of what are you thinking? My five-year plan is to make everyone here happy and I, not lose my house. That's not really a goal. That's, that's average uh, uh, making your decisions. That's that I'm giving you your duty. So for short, mid and, and long-term, um, once you have a, a dream, a desire, or a dissatisfaction, uh, those kind of fall into place. Uh, writing my book series, I had to get with people as smart as you because I never wrote a book before. What's my goal? <laughs> you know, I, I, I'm in a territory I don't know. Uh, but the short term uh, in that process, I could break it down now, but at the time was to write an outline. And so I did write outline, but the big goal wasn't done. But the medium goal was done, but the big one wasn't done. I wrote an outline, but no one's going to buy an outline. Okay, I wrote a book. No one's going to write a book that hasn't been edited yet. Mm -hmm. <laughs> exactly. Oh, my gosh. I misspelled the word the every single time. And it's, 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 a, it's, a, it's a process of that. So a lot of times, as my hero, Charles Tremendous Jones would say, always plan for everything to fail but if something goes right you can work it in so there's your medium because you probably have 15 medium goals before that big one even comes true 
do you think it is essential to write down your goals? And since we're in a society now where everything is like technological based, Mm -hmm. is it still effective if I were to write like a sticky note on my MacBook and say, okay, at 25, I'm going to start a business and this is what's going to happen. Like, do you think it's effective if I were to write it or do you think it's not as effective if I were to just type it up on a computer? Okay, you listeners, get a pen and and (laughs) mark the time stamp for this thing. Uh, uh, That is one thread of a multi-thread thing of making goals. I'll start off with, uh, uh, I use the word average, and it sometimes comes off with negative annotations. Average is the best of the worst, worst of the best. It's what the world gives us with 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 our input moved out. Uh, an average baseball player, uh, you know, bats 200. An exceptional baseball player bats 300. But that exceptional 300 does not tell you if his lawn is mowed, that's still average. If his finances are fantastic, that's still average, et cetera, et cetera. If he has a good marriage, that's still average. <clears throat> so when you're uh, writing things down or you're, or you're prepping yourself to work on a bigger project, I talk about the environment. One part of the environment, and you you already mentioned it, is it better to write things down or use digital? Anything to get information, you know, in front of you is is better than than oh, I'll remember that later. I've been through a hundred seminars and I didn't write anything down. And I still remember what I didn't learn. I didn't get anything out of it. Uh, mm-hmm. I I am a big big huge proponent of of uh, writing things down on paper as opposed to digital, though I do transfer many things to digital and that slow process of writing things down. And and again, where we talked about that little part of our brain that uh, uh, has our dreams and so forth. Well, now it also, uh, uh, the deep conscious wants to know what to bring to your attention. And that process of writing things down on paper psychologically um, tells your brain this is important, especially if you put a date on it. And I got two books. One is called It Works. It's downloadable. I don't have the author in front of me. Another one is uh, by Henrietta. Uh, the big book I use, I'm sorry, the name escapes me, Henrietta something. And it is Write It Down, Make It Happen. And it really goes into all the psychology behind why that's important. But once you write something down, you're now at the back of your brain, the deep conscious will breathe these things to your attention. And the way I say, well, how does it do that? If you're in a crowded theater and there's noise going all over and you can't see me, but I see you and I go, Hannah, I'm right here. With all that background noise, your deep conscious can hear, recognizes the word Hannah and brings it to your attention. And now you're like, someone called me. And there's a sea of noise that you can't even distinguish anything out of it. And that's why writing things down is so important because it will bring it to your attention. Now, the second part of that is not only writing things down, but to review it over and over and over three, five, 15, 20, 200 times a day. When I was quitting smoking, it was approximately yeah, about 30, 40 times a day I reviewed being smoke free. That, that, was, that was the most deepest I ever, I ever approached it, but I had, a, I had an addiction to overcome. And so, uh, and someone even asks me, why do we have to repeat it so often? And I use the word average because the world averagely has already pounded us with those average thoughts. You know, based upon my income, this is what kind of car I'm going to drive. Based upon my relationships, my, par- my parents' relationship, that's the kind of relationship I should expect in my life unless I make a difference. I make a change up here. I, I had to. <laughs> that's, that's why I bring it up. But et cetera, et cetera. Uh, I'm going to keep going on this environment. Uh, next thing is find people that have what you have. If someone's goal is to get good grades, find cool people with good grades. What are you doing? Because they're doing, they're living the life the same way you are and they only may have like two or 3% differences in how they approach studies. For example, it's, it's not a whole world. I know anyone with big glasses, I couldn't do that, but I, I could review my notes after class, just review them. And that's what a lot of them do. And you know, oh, that's what you do. And the second thing, uh, the last uh, two more things, but they kind of go hand in hand is the media you approach. 
uh, I'll just I'll quickly say, um, find books that interest you in the subject you're studying, read upon it, uh, and listen to materials that had the same thing. And I talk about biographies all the time. YouTube is filled with biographies of people overcoming, not people who failed. Don't listen to reviews. <laughs> listen to people who've done something. You have know, reviews. This movie doesn't work. I don't like it. Whatever. I don't care about that. Tim, one, I think the biggest thing that stuck out to me as you were speaking was how often and how much emphasis you put on reviewing your goals, reviewing yes. what you write down. What are your thoughts on visualization? Does it work? Has it worked for you? Oh, do you it, do it? once again, just a great question. I got to hire you to be on. I'm going to run for <laughs> office and you're going you're to be my press secretary. Here. <laughs> <laughs> uh, it is major. And I should have brought it down. And I got to move myself around. Yeah. Something here. Uh, I got two boxes here. This is the box uh, pre pre uh, workshop you know, pre writing books, and this is the one post writing books. I might not share this one because uh, it's, it's you know a goal is also personal, and my visualization in those is stuff I'm working on. I don't want no. I don't want people knowing what my frailties are. Uh, it, it won't help me if they do. Not. Mm -hmm. Uh, this is a good collection of stuff I have worked on. This be written. These are written in the 2000s. And every card here originally was written because I didn't know what to write down to study. And it might be a little logistically like uh, um, I always get to class early. You know, some of them were written in college. I get to class early. Well, that's not a lot of visualization in there. Mm -hmm. I root and the, the card eventually became. I really routinely approach all my appointments early, so therefore I can find the most important place to sit and study. Now I'm in the front of the class, where once again, we're all in the classroom, but I'm not falling asleep because, you know, that's where I'm at, and I'm becoming a better student. Uh, <laughs> I'm seeing if I'm going to throw something at you really kind of cool here. Mm -hmm. Some of these are Bible. <laughs> this is actually a label of a talk I just recorded, and I wrote this in 2000. Oh my gosh, this is kind of fun. That's the year I was born. Yep, I wrote this this card in 2000. I don't know if you can see it. I'll read it to you all. It is the only thing tough about success is getting through the crowd at the bottom. And on my YouTube channel, I said it's like two weeks ago. I released a video called "Getting Through." <laughs> I, I just I'm just putting I'm wow. freaking out right now. Yeah, but that's how that is how important writing things down and reviewing it with visuals. Mm -hmm. So getting through the success and it's all in my talks about mentorship. Wow. So, <laughs> was, yeah, the power of visualization does definitely work, according to Tim. And we're seeing it right here. Uh, yeah, that's, 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 action that's, as he's reading his flashcards. 2000, I wrote that down and wow. And so you just posted a video on it, right? I did a few weeks ago, yeah, two, three weeks ago. You see? So like, it's like already back in your subconscious mind this entire time. Okay, you didn't even know it. I'm getting all blushy now because I'm I'm actually kind of excited. It's like wow, it's kind of it's kind of cool. And like, hey, we all. <laughs> Tim, you briefly mentioned that when it comes to your goals, goals are personal, and you don't like sharing your goals with anyone. I read a study a little while ago that says it's important to keep your goals to yourself because one. You don't want anyone to know what you're doing because that's, once again, personal. But also, two, once you start talking about your goals, you kind of trick your mind into thinking that you've already accomplished it. So then you end up procrastinating and not actually working towards it. Have you read anything like that? And like, what do that's you think? That's a loaded question. <laughs> yeah, I know that's a loaded question. <laughs> that's a great, and that, once again, uh, 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 someone write down a time, sh time stamp on this one. <laughs> Yeah. <clears throat> okay. What? Uh, first of all, no, I do share my goals with with with, with uh, my my uh, group. I, there's a team of us that come together, about three, four of us, uh, depending on what I'm working on. And we wrote the books together. We're working on the workshop. It's going to be online in about a month or so, uh, and, and we're all doing that together. So there are people who know about it. What I really, really strongly advise for two reasons: not to share your goals with other people because they don't have the skills or the discipline or the knowledge of what you're working on. And out of love, 
they will try to discourage you from hitting something. You know, maybe it's unrealistic. You're bringing the candle at two ends. And I say that out of love. So some, a lot of, a lot of times I just share with people, oh, I'm working on a project and you know, I think it might get a kick out of it. And oh, what a, and I'll just, I'll just name a little element that they can digest. Um, though a lot of times uh, writing to, I mean, we have two books out there in a workshop. Yeah. You're, you're questioning yourself and you're like, Oh, Am I, am I doing this right? But my my team, they always tell me I'm I'm, I'm right on the track and that is fantastic. Um, what was the second part of that uh, question? The second question was the study that I read that says once you start talking about your goals, you trick yes. your mind into believing that you've already accomplished it and then you don't. This is a, and that is a slippery slope. In fact, you're hitting one of my bad habits mm -hmm. is talking about something. My brain will be tricked that, I, that I'm doing it. When I first did some sales, you know, I I actually made a big sale, like twenty five thousand dollars sale, good commission, and what have you. And I lived on that for six months. Well, that, that energy for six months. But uh, so yeah, talking uh, talking about your goals is absolutely not working on them. In fact, I would work. Uh, I would strongly, strongly suggest never to, don't talk about what you're going to do. Only talk about what you have done and uh and, and envision what you're working for because just as you said you will trick your mind into thinking talking about it is doing something and in, in, in not really in jest but there's, we just had an election and a lot of politicians were talking about things they're going to do what did you do what have you done that's what that's our measure it should be our measure at least what have you done that's what i want to look at yeah right thank you and what would you say the most important categories for goal setting are, if there are any? <laughs> well, uh, well, there are categories, but they're personal. Mm -hmm. uh, uh, for myself, in in the in, in the goal getter uh, scheduling system, it is it is a category based, not a priority based. Uh, for myself, some of my categories is God. One is family. One is self. One is workshop. One is is called uh, enterprise. I have another business outside of uh, doing workshops, and and there I write down what I wish to accomplish, uh, and I, and I list them all in, in the categories. But they're all personal. My daughter, she's 12 years old. I'm sorry, she's 13, just turned 13. She's mm -hmm. 13 years old. And uh, she uh, has totally different different categories, but they're important to what she's working on. Uh, and uh, for example, she has schooling. She has friends and social uh, a goal she wants to have. Cleaning her room is, I mean, talk about deets. She does not like cleaning. So she really has cleaning the bed, cleaning the desk, cleaning the where to me would be just put the room together because uh, I can see the bigger picture. And that's encour that's encouraging to me to see how what someone has to work on. Because if I give you a category, like in a job situation, it, 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 it would show you what's important to me, but not what's important to you. Which in a job, it's also important too, by the way. <laughs> right. Tim, my last question for you today is, what can you recommend for our listeners when it comes to goal setting? For someone who has never done it before, what can we do to start? Well, this is a loaded question. I love your loaded questions. They all just go boom. So people <laughs> write down this timestamp. <laughs> we all have done uh, goal setting. I have two books on the thing. If I'm gonna lean up here, I was planning on pulling them out. Boop, boop. Ugh. Got books everywhere around me um but we have we have already participated in goal setting whether we know it or not and uh so that's exciting right there my books oh green screen uh they mm -hmm. they uh they address the process and help us understand what has already been given to us a toddler was instead a toddler to the 92 they want to when they want to get out of the crib and once they learn to get out of the crib whatever month that is they are now forever changed. Our goals, and I, we define a goal getter, and we didn't really talk about this, but a goal getter is uh, achieving a, a, an activity or personality trait or you know, something like that, that is that will change the individual by three to 5%. And that's it. As a goal getter, the two to 3% that uh, changes someone. So, so we recognize that we've already 
done the process to change ourselves. We can read now. We we can ride a bike. Uh, we have we have some of us have spouses or not. Just getting a spouse is the biggest change uh, that you can ever go through because you really are thinking about that person all the time. <laughs> I want to drive a bike like the big kids. Now let's focus that to getting to school early or getting straight A's. Let's focus that thinking that we've already done. Mm -hmm. And the average world has kind of spun it out of us. Mm -hmm. So that's my that. word. That's how you get started. Get that imagination going. Reinforce those thoughts till an action partakes. And just keep directing those thoughts, that action till a habit takes place. And a lot of times it's only about six months. Well, when my first company, when I, I was going to lose my house, took a year of thinking and working to, to, I got to a position where I don't have to worry about work ever again. And that was 20 years ago. Wow. That was some good, those are some good thoughts, good mentorship, good reading, good listening. And was it worth it? Absolutely. I love that. So for our listeners who's listening right now, if you want to start a business, start small. Think about the steps that will take you there. So be consistent. Yeah. Say to your word. Find something or depending on what your business is, if it's, I don't know, starting like a car shop, like learn as much as you can about cars. Learn, become an expert in the matter. And then you'll see as time progresses how much you'll evolve and how much closer you will get to your goal. Tim, thank you so much for taking the time to be here with me today to talk so much about goal setting. I appreciate you so much. And I'm sure our audience does as well. Well, thank you very much. It was all, it's a pleasure. <laughs>